Welcome to the Inductive Statistic course by International Business School of Hansa University of Applied Sciences. What we are going to, do, uh, to learn today is first how to construct interval estimation for the mean when we know the population standard deviation, when the population standard deviation is unknown, and when it is unknown and at the same time the, uh, the sample size is smaller or equals 30. And second, we are going to learn how to construct interval estimation for the proportion. First, let's take a, a, a let's first distinguish what's the difference between confidence level and confidence interval. Confidence interval is a range between these two numbers, which are called lower limit and upper limit. We should have 95% or sometimes 90% or 99% of the data, and this 95% or 99% is called your confidence level. That means you are 95% confident that the data will lie between the lower limit and the upper limit. And the, when it is 95% confidence level, that means we have two tails. Each part is 2.5%. When we add 2.5% up, then we will have 5% outside of this confidence interval. We call these are two tails. This one is called lower tail, while this one is called the up tail. Now let's have an overview of what we are going to learn today for the interval estimation. We distinguish infinite population and the finite population. When sometimes the population size is known and it's not very large, at the same time you have sampled a big group. And the small n, that's the sample size, divided by the big N, which is the population size, is larger or equals 0 0.05. In this case, we call this is finite population. And when you calculate your standard error, uh, you, you need to use a more complicated equation. For the rest of that is the infinite population. Besides that, we need to distinguish is the question about um, the mean or the proportion. The proportion is sometimes about the percentage when we know the population standard deviation, we say sigma is no, and our interval estimation is your sample mean plus and minus the z score to times the standard error. Look, this is the standard error, not the standard deviation, because the standard error comes from the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So this is the interval estimate. When you don't know the population standard deviation, you give a hat to the standard error. At the same time, of course, give a hat to the standard deviation. And we call this sigma hat as the estimated population standard deviation. And most of the time, we just use the sample standard deviation as the, the estimated population standard deviation. And this is the equation we have learned in year one uh, descriptive statistics how to calculate the sample standard deviation. When you don't know the population standard deviation at the same time, you have very small sample size. And in this case, first, you need to check what is the degree of freedom. And second, you need to find what is the confidence level, the alpha level. And then you need to check the p-value instead of the z-value and then you construct this interval estimate. When for the po uh, finite population, uh, one more thing you need to do is to put the FPM, finite population uh, character here. Yeah? And the same that you get your z-score, just expand the equation a little bit. And for the proportion, first, we do not use uh, the mu anymore, we use the p. And the standard, er uh, the standard arrow is sigma p bar. W the p bar is the subscripts. It comes from the p times the q and divided by the sample size. And then you square root it. And if you don't know the p bar of the population or the q bar, or, or the p you don't know the population proportion or the population q, and you can use your sample proportion as the population proportion, so p bar and q bar, and then you can get the estimated population uh, standard error. And the same as 
you construct the interval estimate for the mean, you use the sample proportion mean and plus and minus the z-score to times the standard error. First, let's look at this question. It's on page 361. Question is 723. In this question, we said a sample of 50 is taken from a population with standard deviation 27 and that the sample mean is 86. We want to establish an interval estimate for the population mean that is 95.5 confident to include the two population mean. So we need to have an interval. In this question, the variables we have already known is the sample size is 50 and the population standard deviation is 27. And from these 50 samples, we know the mean is 86. So 86 is the sample mean. And the solution, um, first we need to visualize it. Because the confidence level is 95.5%, we need to use the table A1 to check the z-score. And because the z-score uh, comes from the prob probability of the data between the individual value to the mean, so we need to divide 95.5% into two parts. So one part is on the left, one part is on the right. So each part, 47.75%. Uh, and from this number, we can find that the z-score is plus and minus 2. And the second step, we need to calculate our standard error. The standard error comes from the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So 27 divided by the square root of 50, and then we get 3.818. After know you know your standard error, you can construct the interval. The interval comes from the sample mean plus and minus the z-score to times uh, the standard error. So 86, the sample mean, plus and minus the z-score is 2 times the standard error, 3.818. And then you get two numbers. 78.36 and 93.64. One is your lower limit and the other one is your uh, upper limit. That means between 78.36 and 93.64, we have 95.5% of our data. Now let's continue to look at when we don't know the population standard deviation, how we can solve the questions. Uh, on page 365, question 727. In this case, the manager of the light bulb division estimates the average number of hours that a light bulb made by each machine will last. A sample of 40 was selected and the average burning time is 1,416 hours with standard deviation 30 hours. We want to construct the 90 percent confidence interval for the true population mean. In this case, we only have a sample and the sample is 40 and the sample mean is 1416 and the sample standard deviation is 30. So it's S. And we don't know the population standard deviation as we discussed uh, previously. In this case, we can use the sample uh, standard deviation as the estimated population standard deviation. So that will be sigma hat. 30 divided by the square root of uh, the sample size, 40. That is 4.743. This is the estimated standard error. And then you visualize it because we want to construct 90% confidence interval. So we s chop them into two parts. One part is 45%. The other part is 45%. And then we use the score 0 0.45 to check the table A1. And then we can get the Z score is plus and minus 1.645. The last step, you construct the interval. So the sample mean plus and minus the Z score to times the standard error, 4.743. And then you get two numbers. 1,408.198 and 1,423.802. That means between these two numbers, the lower limit and the upper limit, we have 90% of our population mean. Now, let's look at when we don't know the population standard deviation. At the same time, you have very small sample size. 
which is smaller than 30 or equals 30. And on page 378, question 748, let's look at this question. It says the board examined 21 patients and found an average PRS of 72 and a standard deviation 6.2. You want to construct a 98% confidence interval for the true population mean. In this case, you don't know the population standard deviation. 6.2 is your sample standard deviation, which comes from the 21 patients. And the sample size at the same time is very small, it's 21, which is smaller than 30. So in this case, we need to use the t-value rather than the z-value. And we list all the variables we have already known. Sample size 21, sample mean 72, and sample standard deviation 6.2. And our solution, first step, we calculate the standard error. It comes from the estimated standard deviation of the population, sigma hat, divided by the square root of the sample size. Because we don't know the population standard deviation, so we use our sample ones, 6.2 divided by the square root of 21. And then we get 1.353. That is our standard error. The second step, you need to define what is your degree of freedom. In this case, the degree of freedom is the sample size, minus 1. So 21 minus 1, that will be 20. And the confidence level is 98. And we say the margin of error the, uh, is 0 0.02. That is the alpha level. And the next step, we need to check the table. And that is A2 table. When degree of freedom 20, alpha is 0 0.02 we can find that the t-value is 2.528. The same as we construct the interval for the uh, z-score, we use 72, the sample mean, plus and minus the t-value to times the standard error, so 2.528 to times 1.353, and then we get two numbers, 68.58 and 75.42. That means 98% of our population mean will lie between 68.58 and 75.42. That means 98% of the data will lie between the lower limit and the upper limit. Now, let's continue to learn how to construct the interval estimates for the proportion. On page 370, question 742. In this question, it is said a student government at the local university sampled 45 textbooks and determined that of these 45 textbooks, 60% had been marked up in price more than 50% over the wholesale cost. Give a 96% confidence interval for the proportion of books marked up more than 50% by the university student store. So we need to construct the 96% of the confidence interval. And in this case, the variables we have already known is the sample size 45. And among these 45 uh, textbooks, 60%, which is the p bar equals 0 0.6, were marked up as more than 50%. So when we know the p bar, we automatically know the q bar, 0 0.4. It comes from 1 minus 0 0.6. And then we visualize it when the confidence level is 96%. And we first calculate the standard error. It comes from the square root of the sample proportion times the sample Q, and then divided by the sample size. So the standard error is 0 0.073. And 96% confidence level, that means when we check the table, we need to use 0 0.48 to check the table A1 to get our z-score. And the z-score is plus and minus 2.05. So the confidence interval is 0 0.6. This is your sample proportion. Plus and minus the z-score to times the estimated proportion, uh, the standard error, 0 0.073. So you get two numbers. One is 0 0.6 plus 0 0.1497. This is the up uh, limit. And the other one is 0 0.6 minus 0 0.1497. That is the lowered limit. And that means 96% of the 
of our data will be between these two numbers. And these two numbers are 45% and 75%, which means 96% of the population will, uh, the proportion will lie between 45% and 75%. This is what we have learned today, infinite population and finite population. When we know the population standard deviation, when we don't know it, and at the same time sample size is smaller than 30. And how to calculate the interval estimate for the mean and for the proportion. This is the course given by the International Business School, Hansa University of Applied Sciences. If you want to get more video-based explanations, you can go to the YouTube with the keyword Hansa IBS Inductive Statistics, or you go directly to the Blackboard, go to the course STA2, and in the Assignments category, you can find more video explanations. Thanks for your watching.